my disco doesn't dance properly because the bushes have gone on the upper and lower wishbones. So I'm going to just replace the arms, put poly bushes in. Uh, the rubber boot on my dampener is mangled as well, so I'm going to replace that. This is my entertaining look at changing rear suspension arms. Okay, so I've sprayed all the bolts with penetrating oil. But I think they're so rusty that I don't think that's going to help. Before I can get the arms off, I'm going to have to remove these brake lines and the ABS sensor cable. I've just put a G-clamp on this flexible brake hose. Now I can undo this without it leaking out everywhere. Stop it dripping everywhere, I made these. Just a short bit of pipe. Sold it shut at the end. So take the pipe off, screw this in its place, stop my brake fluid dripping out everywhere. Okay, next. Take the upper arm off. Here we go. This is the sensor that measures the suspension height, so I've got to take this off without breaking it. Pop that away safely out there. Next it says, mark the position of the bolts here and here. But if I'm putting a new arm on, what's the point of marking it? It's so rusty anyway. Rusty indeed, because no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get the nut undone. Sawn through the first bolt at the knuckle. But even without the nut, I still can't get the bolt out. It's stuck fast. If you're doing a lot of hammering, I think you should use earplugs. I think you should sell them to the neighbors. Mm. Earplugs. They can hammer it all day long. But I didn't just hammer it all day long. I hammered it for the entire weekend. Well, it's beaten me this weekend. Now it's time to pack everything away, go to work for the week, back again next weekend. So I'm currently 200 miles away from the problem and I've been thinking I shouldn't have started it. The problem is I have no choice now. So I headed to a place to have a chat with an old friend. And the advice was to keep on going, removing bolts around it. Eventually a solution would make itself apparent. At the end of the week, I jumped on the train and headed back to Swansea. Standing room only for four hours. Right, this is the beginning of week two doing this. And I've already got another problem. 
my 24 mil is not deep enough for this and I don't have a spanner big enough so I'm gonna have to go and buy one I have to come here again. I am going to be so cross. Right, I'm back. Got a 24 mil, and it fits just. So let's see how we get on. Once I'd broke the rust on this nut, it took me a good few turns to realise I'd forgotten to hold the bolt, which was spinning on the other side. Right, made some progress. I've managed to take the nut off the bottom of the dampener. The bottom knuckle joint is not moving at all. I've had my feet on it, pushed, nearly knocked the fence over. So, I'm going to do the top one and fold it down to give me better access, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. So, this needs to be undone. Problem is, I can't get a socket in, because the socket is too tall. I've got to do it with a spanner. I'm not strong enough. Luckily, the mechanic that fitted these before me wasn't strong enough either, and the nut came undone without any effort. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not having any fun now. It drips down my neck. This one came out really easy. It's finger tight now. And the other one is really rusty. And that's what I'm undoing now. It's a good job I don't have to hold that with the spanner as well because I wouldn't be able to do it. This is the last, the last tool that fits. Not a lot of room in here. To get my proper sockets in, so I had to use my smaller sockets. It's getting easier. Or I'm getting stronger. Just the outside was rusty, but it was stuck. I wouldn't like you wouldn't believe. But no, it's not much fun. I'm tired, and I want a beer. Don't relax so much. You have to fix it tomorrow. Right, it's day two, and I loosened the bolts yesterday. Today, my problem is I can't get the bolts out. This one slides out the easiest, but the air compressor housing gets in the way, which is annoying, because now I've got to take that off. Oh dear. One pivot bolt removed. I still can't get the other two out despite the whole arm being loose, wiggling it about, hitting it with the hammer, they're just not moving at all. I'm only halfway through that one bolt and I've already used up that whole blade. So I need to put another blade in to finish the other half of that cut. I've only got five blades. I haven't got enough blades to do the job. The good news is when the blades are new they cut really quickly. I've cut through one side of that bolt, but I've got a little problem. 
because it bent my blade when the bolt went. And now the part you've all been waiting for, the bolt that everybody has trouble with. Despite there not being a nut on the back, this bolt will just not come out. So I've come up with an idea. When you want to do it, the captive nut just pulls off. It goes ch -ch -ch and drops onto the floor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the captive nut back and G-clamp it and see whether that will allow the bolt to unthread and pull out. This doesn't make sense, putting the bolt back it took me ages to get it off. I hope this works. And after all my hard effort, I was rewarded with disappointment because the bolt didn't come out, which meant only one thing. cut in half, you can simply fold this part down, moving the bracket out of the way. Without the bracket, you can get your saw in to cut the bolt. I have one blade left. Worst case scenario, I'll come back next week with a hundred saw blades. Not even halfway through. With the last blade ruined, there was nothing left to do but pack away and face another trip to work on the world's most expensive public transport. So at the moment, I'm 200 miles away from the problem and I've been thinking about a solution. And then, just as I was going to pay, this fell off the shelf, 24 mil. So I took it as an omen and I bought it. Annoyingly, I've missed the delivery of my bush press and they left it at the pickup point, which is five miles away. There's no bus to get to this place in the middle of nowhere, which is just annoying. They could put it in the local town or the local city, which are closer. No, it's five miles away in a, in a village in the middle of nowhere. So I'm gonna have to go there in a taxi to get brought back. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. me 20 pounds in a taxi to get there and back. So yeah, it's getting expensive now. All the tools to fix every car in the world. Meanwhile, the postman had delivered a fresh assortment of saw blades. Carbide tipped for extra cutting power, as recommended on the internet. But the internet was wrong, because these blades might as well have been tipped in chocolate, because they didn't last long at all. Mm -hmm. 
Now Land Rover knew about this fault when they designed the car, because once you've sawn through the bolt, the other half just simply slides out of this pre-cut sliding slot. It's off. Three weeks. There we go. <laughs> Now, with the arm fully removed, it's plain to see why the bushes need replacing. And also, why the bolt wouldn't come out. That is not supposed to be stuck to that. I'm still left with the problem of getting this bolt out of the knuckle. Despite heating it up, the bolt still wouldn't come all the way out. Bolts are made of medium carbon steel, a metal alloy comprised roughly 98% iron. When exposed to air and water, iron corrodes and becomes rust. Molecules of rust are approximately six times bigger volume than the original metal. So when the bolt gets rusty, it grows in size and get stuck in place. Applying heat will cause thermal expansion, but the rusty bolt has no room to expand. This is called constrained expansion, which puts stress and strain onto the bolt. With rust being brittle and flaky, it will break first. This graph shows that to expand as little as 1%, the bolt needs to be heated to approximately 600 degrees Celsius. The burning temperature of this map gas flame is 2020 degrees. When bolt becomes this silver grey colour, it reached a temperature of around 500 degrees. This glowing cherry colour means it reached 600 degrees, what is enough to break the bond. <laughs> I don't believe it. To my surprise, the drop links came undone fairly easily. This is annoying me because if I set, they always miss one out. It's always the one you bloody need. Ratchet spanners. There isn't an 18 in my set of ratchet spanners. It goes up to 19, but skips 18 over. Drop link done. all the trouble I had with the top one, the bottom one is finger tight. With all the excitement of easy bolt removal, my brain decided to take a rest. Right, I am one bolt away from getting this off. And as you've just seen, I have snapped the last remaining three eighths. This is not strong enough. The reason being, it requires a 21 mil socket. As I said, I've explained, I don't have a 21 mil half inch socket. Gone a little bit. Using all of my strength and none of my brain, I continue to tackle the bolt. Damn, tell me, I've got to take the exhaust off now. <laughs> I was unstoppable and prepared to break every tool in my toolbox to remove this bolt. I've matched another one and my arm. The last tool I have that'll do the job. I've 
smashed another one. Tired, but still enthusiastic, I was not going to be beaten by this last remaining bolt. But enthusiasm alone was getting me nowhere because this arm doesn't fold out of the way. So I still couldn't get my sword to the bolt. Mentally exhausted and physically drained, I decided to call it a day and resume the job at first light. But not wishing to wake the neighbours at such an early hour, I decided to tackle something quieter first. Look at this. When the suspension arm's gone up, it's just torn it open. Luckily, I bought a new one. I think you can just cut this. When the suspension arm goes up, I think this bit of rubber might just drop out. running out of saw blades. I thought I'd bought enough to saw the whole car in half. Obviously not. Steady and slow. Gary. With my new relaxed approach to bolt removal and the soothing sound of electric power tools, my brain began to reboot. Knowing I was getting closer to fitting new parts, my brain finally came back online. Well, I was nearly at the end of my saw blades. And I thought oh, I'll just give it one last chance with a spanner. Weirdly enough, the bolt has now started to undo. However, I am most of the way through the bolt. So I'm hoping it doesn't snap as I undo it. Because if it does, I'm back to square one. I've got to start on the bolt again.
one squint. another weekend stuck again as usual this time I can't get the shock absorber back onto the arm I don't know how and I don't want to break it and I don't want it to explode because it's full of high pressure air inside and I've got bang so that's that see you in six days time <laughs> I'm about 200 miles away from the problem and I've been thinking that either I'm the most unlucky person on the planet with my discovery or everyone on the internet is lying about how long it takes. And I've been doing this for four weekends and I still haven't finished. And I'm still using public transport. So, I'm 200 miles away from the problem and I've been thinking about that bolt getting so much grief, snapping all my tools breaking all my saws. I was tightening it up instead of undoing it. I spent all that time and I was just turning the bolt the wrong way. Right, I'm about 200 miles away from the problem and I've been thinking. This one's at King's Cross. It's open 24 hours a day so I can come here whenever I like. Amazing. Right, I'm back, and I think the answer to my problem is to depressurize this. So I can push it back up and align it with the lower arm. To do that, I've got to undo this air pipe on the top, which I'm not very happy about. It's easier to undo it from behind, because you can get quite a lot of movement through this little hole here. You can see it better. You can hear it hissing. Seems all the air is out now. <laughs> oh, it's nice then, all right. Yes, got it one. That was a tricky little one. Now I'll just turn my cutters into pliers. So I can squeeze this tight. And with the air shock deflated, the dampener can be moved up, down, left, right, backwards and forwards, so you can get the bolt back in. Oh yeah, one more thing. Don't forget to tighten the airline back up. Put this one in already. Put that side in first, and then wiggle this one in. It's through.
bang on. The suspension has been reassembled and another day has finished, leaving me with only the brakes to tackle in the morning. That's enough for now. Now the Land Rover is really high off the ground and has a long way to come down. Because remember, this shock absorber still doesn't have any air inside. So, 200 miles away from the problem, and I have got the dilemma of do I do the other side myself, having completed the first side, or do I send it off? I've bought the tools to do it myself, and I have discovered this, a 21mm podge wrench, which will allow me to get a bar over the end, it's a ratchet, and it will, if I believe correctly, fit on that rear upper arm bolt. The most time I went out to buy some of this, because I can't get it at home. While I was there, I found one of these. The elusive 18 mil ratchet spanner. Okay, we're not off to a good start this week because the last tool I used last week was a 22 mil socket to tighten my wheel nuts up. First tool I need this week is the 22mm socket to take my wheel nuts off. No 22mm socket. Anywhere to be seen. I don't know what I did with it. I'm normally so careful with my tools. With my experience from the other side and all the tools in the world, I hoped to get this side done within one weekend. The 21mm podger wrench didn't fit. But if you ground it off, you get it in. 
I haven't got a grinder, so I might take it someone get it ground off if I have to do it again. Luckily, I'd remembered to replace my broken 3 8 breaker bar. And I'd also bought a 21mm ratchet spanner. This is the elusive 18mm ratchet spanner that was missing last time. Okay, after the wheel nut debacle, everything's going well. The first three bolts off, and now I'm gonna have breakfast. This is fantastic. I'm so happy. I'm so, so, so happy. Well, all went well yesterday. Everything came off really easy. Went back, went on really easy. Till I got to the cam bolt. And the cam didn't fit in the area on the upper arm. So I left it. And I'm going to tackle it this morning, but I have no idea how to do it other than chisel it out. I don't have an angle grinder or a Dremel or anything like that. Right, so that was a success. I managed to chisel out a little bit of metal and the cam bolt now fits in and it works as well. It goes up and down just as it's supposed to. Now let's take a closer look at the parking brakes. I first made sure this spring fits because some of them don't. Then I fitted it to the cable, fitted the spring, looped up, put the spreader bar in. I levered the brake pad over the spreader bar and clipped it up. This spring's easier to do on this side because it's on the top. This is the tension adjuster. It comes in three parts. The adjuster pushes the pads apart, making them tighter inside the drum. I've just added a little grease to them. Leave it out the pad and drop the greasy adjuster into place. They're adjusted with a screwdriver, tighter, looser, but it has to be done with the disc in place. Align a hole to where the adjuster is and poke a screwdriver in there. Then I check the tension using my torque wrench. Then I loosen the adjuster as per the instructions. Then make sure the pads are set nicely, and I'm done. And the last bolt, the most fun of them all. Okay, press the brakes, please.
Okay, so the car's back on the road and it is fantastic. The suspension works, it doesn't float up and down and left and right like it used to. And since I've had the wheels aligned, it drives in a straight line, which it's never done. Even last time I had the wheels aligned, it never drove this straight and smooth. So, really, really happy. And driving to London saves me a fortune over the train. And when I'm stuck in traffic, the fuel economy is fantastic. I can do this all day long. I love it. And I love it so much, I drove and drove and drove. 525 miles to the Scottish Highlands. So I've taken a little drive to Ben Nevis to test out my suspension and it seems okay. Yeah, it makes a bit of a squeaking noise. Like rubber, rubber and squeaking noise when you go over bumps. Raise or lower the suspension. But it works. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy until the next thing breaks. So I'm still 200 miles away and I'm thinking that the money I've spent on public transport probably equates to an engineer or a mechanic fixing the car for me. And I've just wasted all this time, I could have had a car 